Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ranth. I got a couple guests on this morning. I got Kathy and Becca from the Missoula Public Art c uh, Committee talking about uh, an art call for the um, traffic signal boxes. They'll talk about this a little bit more about how you can apply. Deadline is August 31st. So I'll talk about a little bit about that. I got also got another guest coming into uh, the August month of my Wake Up Missoula show. I also have uh, Missoula Agent Services. I got Senior Corps representative and a Missoula uh, Prescription Drug Task Force per, uh, person. Ren uh, Renee and Lee uh, will be here to talk about that. So let's talk about uh, some things that are happening. Uh, of course, last week I wasn't here because we did our zombie camp last week. It is available online if you can check it out on MCAT TV. Missoula. You can check it out on our YouTube page as well. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. It's a little smoky out there. I'll talk about your uh, particular matter levels that are happening right after a little bit of weather. It's 59 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 95. Your low is going to be 59. But of course, by Thursday, things are going to start cooling down with uh, sunny skies, highs into 89, and then you, it's going to start dipping a little bit further down. So today, it seems like it's going to peak on your hump day. Uh, for temperature wise, but let's take a quick look at the uh, like the particulate matter that's happening in the Montana area. So if you go to the uh, um, the Department of uh, Environmental Quality uh, via Montana, you can go to this website and it kind of tells you about the wild sm uh, wildfire smoke outlook. And you can see most of the Western Montana is yellow. Some of the southern parts of it, there's green areas in the northeastern areas as well. Um, and if you take a look at the uh, Missoula area, you can kind of see the graph and see kind of how where it's been going. So far, it's been moderate. We have averaged about 15.3 uh, particulate matter, which basically means the particulate matter is 0.03% the size of a single strand of human hair. And that's the kind of stuff that builds up and can get into your lungs. And with a, a certain amount, which right now it's at, at moderate level, so if you are very sensitive to smoke and that kind of thing, then you might want to limit outdoor, outdoor activities. But if you're perfectly fine, then you don't have to really necessarily let this dictate you going outside. But of course, today is also going to be really hot. Expect tomorrow to exp uh, to be much better in terms of weather. But let's get into the news. I want to stop. Uh, I want. I don't want to keep my guests waiting. Uh, good news for the University of Montana as they go into the fall semester with a 17% increase in student enrollment. Not since 2014 has the university seen these kinds of numbers. But just so you know, this is from the summer. So this is summer enrollment. Uh, 2,932 students registered for classes compared to 2,493 last year. UM plans to eliminate winter session altogether. UM has experienced an enrollment drop of 28.5% since 2010, although it's uh, stemmed a decrease in freshman numbers last fall. University says they accept students all the way up to the first day of class. Of course, uh, last week, uh, phase two of Fort Missoula Regional Park had a grand opening. They had another grand opening. The Fort Missoula Regional Park isn't officially open. So if we take a look, uh, the baseball fields are now open. They made a four, I mean five baseball fields kind of surrounding a nice little uh, concessions area. So you can see some of the folks around there playing some kickball, enjoying some of the uh, new uh, Fort Missoula facilities. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can play there. They had a basically a large scale chessboard that doesn't give it justice, but it's kind of like a um, fairly large chessboard. Uh, you get, you know, just a lot of outdoor activities. This is another grand opening. They always have some kind of event happening at Fort Missoula Regional Park. And a really fun thing about it is that they have all abilities playgrounds for all s types of kids. So it's a good way to get outdoors and enjoy some of the uh, activities from Fort Missoula Regional Park. So Let's talk about um, other news things that are happening. Um, Eastern Montana has uh, had a 50 year history of sexual abuse within the Catholic churches out of Montana. The Great Falls Billings uh, Diocese uh, will uh, soon post online the names of 27 former clergy who 50 years of sexual abuse in Eastern Montana prompted two lawsuits and led to the, the, the diocese uh, diocese to declare uh, bankruptcy in 2017. The 86 86 individuals who were abused between 1943 and 93 um, were 
are now voting on the proposed $20 million settlement announced in April. Two-thirds support is needed, and the diocese attorney, Ford uh, Elizer, expects only one or two no votes at most. An attorney for the victims did not immediately respond to the request for comment. The names will be posted on the diocese website within 30 days of the bankruptcy court's approval and remains online for at least 10 years. Uh, preventative measures are now in place to make... Uh, psychological surveys on any prospective clergy folk who wish to work under these churches in the state of Montana. Of course, uh, the church, a couple of these churches went bankrupt in Helena. Um, the bankruptcy court w will then hold a final hearing to confirm the plan on August 14th in Butte. Of course, I'm going to skip over some national news. I'm going to stop keeping my uh, guests waiting. Um, I have uh, people from the Public Art Committee, and here is an art clip from the Zootown Arts Community, uh, uh, Community Center. And this is all about bowling. So when I come back, I'll have those guests on, Kathy Olson and Becca McLean, to talk more about their um, traffic signal boxes. Art call. guys, we're back here with Kathy Olson and Becca McLean, and you guys are here to talk about the uh, art call. So you have an art call that's happening uh, with your art boxes. That's right. So as you can see, these are the traffic signal boxes, but of course they might be a little small. Um, these are, in fact, uh, scale models of what you guys are asking artists out there to make, to apply, by mm -hmm. the end of August 31st. So tell us a little bit more about the traffic signal boxes. Yeah, so this is our 10th year. Um, with a traffic signal box call out and this year we are looking to fill four new locations in Missoula. Um, like Scott said, applications are due August 31st and we boxes will be painted at the end of September and then um, we'll have a opening for them beginning of October, first Friday. Um, what else? You can find the art call two places, one being our website, missoulapublicart.org, underneath Art Calls, and also, as well as the city website. Um, if you type in, to Google the simplest way, City of Missoula Public Art, you'll find our committee site and be able to search um, Public Art Calls that way. And it's a great way to kind of promote artists here in the city of Missoula. I did notice, I did actually want to ask a question because I noticed some of the art that was that's being um, um, being um, used in the Missoula County, the Western Montana Fair is was also used on an art box as well. I believe it was Josh Quick who uh, designed mm -hmm. this year's uh, Western Montana Fair. Absolutely, Josh actually has done two boxes, one on Fifth and Higgins, and the other one is where Tool intersects yeah. with West Broadway. Um, we have currently over 50 boxes that have been completed. Wow. We started the project in 2009. Some years we've been lucky enough to have two art calls. Um, in these past years we've um, settled down to just one art call per year. Typically we have three to five boxes and 
what is so exciting about this is, is the collaboration that we have with the neighborhoods and the funders and the public sector and other individuals in the private sector. We could not do this project without the Montana Department of Transportation. The boxes actually belong to them. And when we started this project, they gave us a resounding yes. They've been supportive throughout this project, and in fact, because of our project, have allowed other communities in Montana to do the project also. So if you travel Montana, you'll see different communities, Helena, Hamilton, Bozeman, Great Falls, they all have signal boxes with art, and um, started here in Missoula, and we've helped those communities. Um, the other part of this is, what we like about it is it's, it's an opportunity for new artists, artists that have never done public art before, to understand the time frames and the processes and the actual dealing with a contract. Right. And understanding that aesthetic aspect of public art along with public health, safety, and welfare. So uh, since we're talking about the artists, let's talk about what the artist has to do to go through the application process and get approved. Yeah. and one. On that note, one thing is this Thursday, tomorrow, August 2nd, at 5.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers, we have an informational meeting for artists that are interested in um, applying if they have questions. So that, for sure, come to that if you're interested in applying. And even if you're not sure, that's okay. That's what it's, that's what it's for. Um, but to answer your question, artists apply online via our submittable um, link, which is all listed in the art call. And then they, along with the online application, they have to turn in a model, a small model similar to these that we're, that we're showing that can illustrate to us um, what they're going to paint so we, can, so we can understand that. And again, it's, it's more than just painting. Artists can also, they, right. because not all artists are painters. So right. one of the things we have done from the beginning is allow artists to take their imagery and have it translated, um, printed on vinyl, and then applied. Oh. So they can work with one of the local mm -hmm. sign companies that actually can... Um, take that image, print it on the vinyl, and then work with that company to actually put it on the box. The artist does not have to put the vinyl on the box. Um, it, in fact, needs to be done by a professional. So we really, again, it goes back to we wanted a wide variety of artists to be able to take advantage of this. Um, but of course, you also have a lot of returning artists who've done more than one art box. Artists can do two boxes every three years because it's been so popular. We, we, we have some artists that would do a box every year if they could. But we want, again, we want to open it up. You have to live in Missoula County mm -hmm. in order to do a box. Right. Um, and so it's not open to artists throughout the state, just those artists that are in Missoula County. And hopefully we'll have artists that have maybe moved back to the area that have wanted to try it. Um, we have established artists that would like to try and, and um, actually um, do something that maybe they've never done before. People that have never done this public art type of work before out mm. there. Right. So. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the details. Uh, you said where people can find more information. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, MissoulaPublicArt.org. .org. .org. <laughs> um, also, a big date. August 31st. August 31st of the month. is the deadline. Yes. We have a selection committee um, involved. Um, it, it includes people from the neighborhood. In, in fact, this year we have the Heart of Missoula um, participating because we worked with them on a neighborhood grant. They're funding two of the boxes. Um, the One of the boxes will be located at Orange and Spruce, the other one at Higgins and Pine. Mm. We have two more downtown. Um, Stockman's Bank is funding a box at Orange and Broadway, and then we have the Downtown Partnership funding a box at Broadway and Higgins. Cool. And uh, many of uh, the requirements that you need is a 3D scale model. 3D scale model, right. a completed application at submittable.com. Again, all of that information is on the public, both public art website and the City of Missoula public art pages right. and very, very easy to complete. Um, we do want samples of your work so we can see that you um, can finish the work and actually can complete this type of project. Um, but most importantly, a model too that actually reflects what you are proposing. Right. So of course, uh, if people want more information, they can get in contact with the Public Art Committee via your website through the city or your own website, which is publicartmissoula.org. But of course, do you guys have a number that anyone can reach you by? 
Um, you can email me at Becca, B-E-C-C-A, at artsmissoula.org, and our number is 406-541-0860. And please call with questions, and I'm happy to happy to help. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Is there anything else you want to thanks say? Thanks so much. No, we're yeah, excited so. to see yeah. what artists have to propose this year. Awesome. That'll be exciting. All right. Our ongoing project. Our yes. call for any artists out there, hey, you want to make it uh, art? out of the traffic signal boxes in the downtown Missoula area and expanding area in the Missoula area. Mm -hmm. um, MissoulaPublicArt.org for more information and the application process as well. So thanks guys for joining me. Thanks Scott. Thanks so much Scott, we appreciate yeah. it. And we'll be right back with Missoula Agent Services right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back here with uh, uh, Leah Fitch, and we also have Renee uh, Labrie uh, Shanker. Shanks. Shanks. My close, man. Close. Okay. Uh, hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here with Missoula Asian Services and the uh, Missoula Forum for Children and Youth. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are teaming up mm -hmm. for a prescription drug task force, and you also we're gonna we were gonna have an officer on here to talk a little bit about this. But um, what do you guys have to say about this program as well? Sure, well, I'll start off to say with Missoula Aging Services, all of our programs are geared around promoting the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. And our one program, SMP, stands for Senior Medicare Patrol. Right. It's statewide, and its whole vision is empowering people to prevent healthcare fraud, waste, and abuse. And the Prescription Drug Task Force fits into this because we spend about $1 for every six on prescription drugs in Medicare. And when we talk Medicare fraud, you think the Environmental Protection Agency costs us $3 billion a year? Medicare fraud costs us $60 billion a year. Wow. Yeah, so it's huge. And if we can stop it at the person, you know, the people level, yep. we can put an end to this. Yeah, and this could have an overall uh, um, reactive um, approach to affect everybody in a positive way. Correct, mm -hmm. correct, yeah. So uh, how do people kind of like get involved? It seems like it's very kind of like ongoing for sure so so yeah so um the missoula forum for children and youth we run the uh, missoula prescription drug task force um that started in 2014 and it really was in response to you know um, prescription drug um, overdose and um, a rise in um, specifically adolescents using prescription drugs without a doctor's um, um, advice. So um, in about 14% of adolescents in Missoula actually um, misuse prescription drugs. Um, and that's pretty consistent with the rest of the U.S. Um, and so, but what we found in, in the last year or so was that um, in terms of uh, looking at ER statistics um, for overdoses um, and misuse, we're actually seeing a rise in seniors misusing uh, prescription drugs and opioids. So um, that's why we really wanted to team up with Renee and Missoula Aging Services because we really wanted to do some outreach to our senior population in Missoula to talk about um, the dangers of um, prescription drug misuse and really talk with them about like how can you make sure that you're not misusing and also how can you make sure that you are properly disposing of your medication and storing your medication. Mm. So, Well maybe um, you can answer some of those questions about like uh, disposal and um, 
some of the uh, statistics that are happening. Right, the, uh, there is a rise in 55 and older, and part of that is the way our bodies react mm -hmm. uh, as we age. They react mm -hmm. differently with the prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So it's important to ask your doctor some questions before you take them, and don't be afraid to take them if you need them, mm -hmm. but you don't need to walk home with 30 pills just because you know it's a month supply it'll be more convenient if you mm -hmm. if you need them great if you don't don't mm -hmm. but what happens is people once they take them because they think they need to you can easily get addicted to them mm -hmm. and so maybe just ask say tell the pharmacist i only want seven days worth let's start with that and then you can always get more if you need them mm -hmm. and also it's important to know your pills there's been cases where folks have gone into homes and replaced them with look-alikes like there's a Tylenol pill that looks like an opioid. Wow. And next thing you know, um, you're on the wrong pain pill and you're not getting what you need. Mm -hmm. So if people need them, they should take them, but they should also know the risks and all the benefits and talk mm -hmm. to their doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and you're, and also with, with the senior population, there is um, more of a chance of um, medications um, not working well together, and so that can be really a, a hard thing as well. So, yeah, yeah, and um, I guess the the biggest thing is like you know my grandma, she's she's getting older and mm -hmm. older, and she's had some issues, kind of like figuring out what she needs and all this mm -hmm. stuff. She's had help from her kids mm -hmm. over this time, but there's it's really hard to kind of keep track of all just like something that you just don't really think about. You mm -hmm. know, like uh, taking pills is like brushing your teeth you, you, a lot of times you just don't really think about it you just kind of just do it mm -hmm. not knowing that you're doing the thing because it just kind of reminds me of a story about when I got like a different mm -hmm. kind of toothpaste mm -hmm. my teeth felt worse without like is it mm -hmm. uh, it was so weird because yeah. it, it's like you, tr you change even the, a subtle thing and you just don't know it because mm -hmm. a lot of times you just expect the toothpaste or the pills to work how they've always worked right yeah. right Mm -hmm. Yes, and your body builds up tolerance over time, and oh, yeah. there's all sorts of things. So it's so important. People should know that they're part of that equation. It's not just somebody prescribing it to them. They're part of that, and they need to mm -hmm. communicate mm -hmm. how they feel and if, if they feel it's not working as well or or it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, not just taking them because they were prescribed. And I, and I really feel for a lot of folks who are in pain, mm -hmm. like, and they, they need these just to feel normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what it is, is that um, that's it's so easy to get addicted to something because it makes you feel normal mm -hmm. compared to like being in pain. Yes. So, you know, what, what, like you have to balance the scales. It's like, do I want these drugs to make me feel not in pain so it's yeah. it's such an interesting thing for sure and then of course the up in dosage because you know they talk to the doctor about it a lot of times the, you know like it's like oh i take two pills because one pill's not enough anymore and then they up the dosage and then that's when these kind of things can happen mm -hmm. yeah and that's why we talk a lot too about proper use um so making sure that you are following the directions of the doctors precisely um and then if you need more that you talk to the doctor about that so right and that's the proper use and then proper storage is important because she mentioned the 14 percent of kids that are misusing part of that is they're getting into medicine cabinets yeah. and the pills of their grandparents or of their parents and they think that they're safe because because they're not street drugs, mm -hmm. you know, they're prescribed by a doctor, so they have this view that, well, they can't be that bad because the doctor right. prescribed them. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the common misconception, is that just because it's prescribed doesn't mean it's prescribed to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just right. have a look at the camera. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, too, and also, the, um, like, for some of the younger kids that are accidentally using medications, so maybe they are finding medication, like, right. at their grandparents' house. So in, in half of cases where kids are sent to the ER because of, um, many, like, medication overdose is because they maybe got in their grandparents their aunt and uncle's uh, medication at home yeah so. and um, another kind of story I'm just kind of going off the rails is like um, you, you know like a fast food restaurants is doing this whole calorie counting thing where there's like they add the calories right there but then you have somebody who with type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. who looks at there just like calories don't matter to them it's about other content mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. in the food as well mm -hmm. so it's like you know what what you read and what you see mm -hmm versus what is being clearly displayed as well. Right, yeah. for sure. Yeah, well, and on that theme of thought, um, the kids, when they take a pill, they, they don't care if it's an opioid or a heart medicine or mm -hmm. um, a blood thinner, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. just taking a pill here and a pill there, unbeknownst to the person who owns the pills, mm -hmm. and then throwing them all in together and just take them because they think they're pills and yeah. they're mm -hmm. 
they're, who knows how they can interact once the kids get them. So mm -hmm. the proper storage is equally as important. Mm -hmm. And then the final one is the proper disposal. Mm -hmm. That's huge as well. Absolutely. And so Missoula actually has four prescription drug drop boxes where you can drop off unused or expired medications yep. just to make sure that there's less access for everybody else um, from either the kids around your house, from pets, um, are also just being stolen, right? Right. Um, and so uh, we have the four drop boxes. We also twice a year have a prescription drug take back that right. happens at the mall and people can bring in their unused and expired medications mm -hmm. and one more thing we do have uh, disposal bags that are available so people can just dispose of it at their home now normally I wouldn't tell you to do that because you don't want to throw it away in the trash and you also don't want to flush it down the toilet because that can get in our water systems right, right? so um, we have these disposal bags that actually help you dispose of medication safely and Missoula Aging Services has a few and we mm -hmm. also do as well so if you're interested just let us know cool. so do you guys have any uh, events that are happening this month or is this more uh, of an awareness? Um, so right now we're just kind of working on a campaign. You might see a commercial or two um, on television. Uh, we have some brochures that we're making. Um, we're also going to be doing some training, Renee. Some presentations. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. We'll be doing to the senior housing facilities in Missoula and mm -hmm. areas. And so hopefully we'll be hitting everybody mm -hmm. by the time we're done with this. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, is there anything else you guys want to mention? I don't think so. Too bad Dean wasn't here with the police yeah. department because they have a whole other take on this and how it relates to you know keeping our community safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, the proper use, storage, and disposal, and if people want information about that, to please call Missoula Aging Services or the forum. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Um, if you're interested in all about learning more about this, you can go to the Missoula Aging Services website, MissoulaAgingServices.org. Yes. And Missoula Children's uh, for, uh, for Children and Youth, which is MissoulaForum.org. .org. Yeah. I know that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I Great. really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. Right this. Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television, hailing you from out to lunch for this edition of Out and About. Hey everyone, I'm with Dave Chrisman. He is the downtown ambassador for the Missoula Business Improvement District. Thanks for being on the show, Dave. Oh, you're welcome. It's a great pleasure, man. Well, so you're an ambassador. What does it mean? Well, it's uh, trying to make Missoula a little more welcoming to everybody, whether they're visiting from out of town or living here for 50 years. So right. Anything we can do, especially for the downtown area, to make it more welcoming and a, and a better experience for folks and helping uh, picking up trash and helping with the parking meters and uh, educating folks it just goes on and on and things you can do to make it better. Right. Those kinds of things that we take for granted, it's, it's, it's kind of becomes uh, more of a reality when we have things like this. That's when we, that's when we uh, create something to bring people's memories back and to understand who we are. So the, the Hell Gates Canyon is right down there. But there's a pass right over here. We come up there, it's what they call up through Patty Canyon. That was one of the important passes for the Salish people.
as you can see, Syria is the smallest of the big countries in the Middle East. Um, there's a big gap between Syria and the UAE. Um, this, however, is an estimation or a projection for 2015. 2015 is, of course, in the middle of the Civil War, which uh, began as protests in 2011 and, and then fully erupted into violence in 2012. Um, so it never reached 23 million, as is projected here. Uh, most estimates say it topped out at 22 million. Um, since that point, uh, about 4 million have left the country, um, and about 7 million are uh, displaced within the country. So add those two together, you get about half of the country living where they used to live. 2% uh, of the country has also died in the Civil War. And just preparing for this presentation, I found out that number is actually higher than the proportion of uh, British citizens who died in World War II and uh, the proportion of French citizens who died in World War II. Hey guys, welcome back. A lot of great programs happening on MCAT for the next couple days. Uh, we'll have a whole bunch of weekend programs this Friday as well. I just want to mention that you guys can find out more information about MCAT in general by going to MCAT.org. Our zombie camp has wrapped up our summer camps this season, and MCAT is back to our old schedule from 11 to 7. If you uh, click on the picture, Right here, as you see, it's a nice little drone shot of, uh, of a scene from our zombie camp movie. So if you get a chance to see it, all you got to do is click on the picture, and it will bring you to our the cleanest uh, high-resolution video version of our zombie movies. So it's not just one movie. It's not just two movies. It's not three. It's not four. It's six. I'm just skipping five. Okay, so six short films made by the kids of... Um, our zombie camp last week. Uh, I'm surprised it happened last week because it feels like it happened a year ago, but you guys can watch it anytime on our YouTube channel. You can watch it on video on demand of our live show. You get to see a little bit, uh, bit, a bit behind the scenes of some of the kids and see how they felt about the zombie camp while making it along the week as well. So all you got to do is go to MCAT.org. But if you want to find out more information about me and all my stuff, you can always go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. It is a great resource for everything Missoula. Just news, interviews. Hey, if you're interested in coming on my show, you can email me, um, mcat at mcat.org. You can also call mcat at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. So... That's kind of what's happening with MCAT News. We have a groundbreaking happening this afternoon with the Missoula Public Library. Missoula Public Library will be uh, basically having all their partners, Missoula Community Access Television, Families First Children's Museum, um, name change uh, pending, um, Spectrum Discovery Center, will all be uh, grabbing a shovel and breaking ground. Uh, both literally and figuratively at the new site of the library, which will be directly across from MCT on um, I think uh, directly across off Main Street. So it's instead of being Kitty Corner, it'll be directly across as they build the new library. Old library will be in operation throughout the way as well, as well as MCAT. So we won't actually be fully moved in until probably March of 2020 is the slated date when they're going to start opening uh, the new place. But also MCAT will be um, keep on trucking. Uh, we're open from 11 to 7, Tuesday through Friday, for the public. Uh, if you ever want to check out equipment, we have uh, Canon T3Is. We got RF50s, Canon RF50s. These are all Canon. We're a Canon family here. Um, it's Canon. Um, Canon. Canon. Um, we got tripods. We got light kits. We got wireless mics. Uh, we got a bunch of fun little things as well. We got studio use. If you're a photographer and you want to do some uh, high fashion photo type stuff, you can, I guess you can do it. Uh, the only stipulation is that MCAT uh, needs your programs. We're always looking for new programs and new perspectives of people in the community to come down and make new programs. And this is my pitch. So every single Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., we have orientation for anybody who's interested in being a part of MCAT. So MCAT is the place to be for all your media needs. All right, so there's my spiel. Let's talk about some city council stuff. But I have no clips. I have no city council clips, but I do have plenty of city council um, uh, committee meetings that are happening today. Oregon Park at Oregon, 
Orgrin, Orgrin, sorry, Park at Allegiance Field is the city's civic stadium. The ex, uh, exiting lease with um, Mountain Baseball requires them to manage the facility, including attracting a large axe necessary to cover these costs. Log Jam Presents is an entertainment company. Basically, it's uh, based out of uh, Top Hat, um, the the Log Jam Amphitheater, Wilma Theater, they're all under that kind of like same kind of uh, umbrella of um, entertainment, are going to be uh, manning some entertainment from the Allegiance Field at the um, baseball park at the Osprey Stadium. So they're going to be doing some music stuff. The Revive Lease will allow Log Jam to use the stadium for music and comedy events. Um, Mountain Baseball will retain primary responsibility for the stadium and will continue to manage the facilities for baseball games and other community events. So basically, if there's a huge event, the employees will continue to work maybe even more during the summer months. So it's a good opportunity. They're going to be talking about this in the community meeting for admin finance this morning. Um, and you can voice your opinion, how you feel about this. Um, they'll probably talk this in committee. Um, and of course, it might be going on the consent agenda next Monday, but we'll find out this Friday. Moving on, Parks and Conservation. In February 2016, the city of the city council unanimous, unanimously adopted resolution 8044, which means Missoula's zero waste resolution was adopted. It's a community-wide 90% reduction in landfills by 2050. Zero waste emerged as a community goal during the Missoula Community Climate Smart Action Summits. Community organization began in 2015 with the Zero Waste Missoula a Coalition uh, by Home Resource. A uh, subsequent zero waste leadership team consisting of city and home resource staff engaged Missoulians in the plan process that followed, uh, convening a zero waste advisory committee to key community stakeholders to support plan development and public outreach. So they're talking about more about this and zero waste in initiative, about how they're going to be go going about doing this. This is going to be 32 years to reduce 90% of the landfill um, export, I guess, if you want to call it that. So they'll be talking about this in Parks and Conservation, I believe, this afternoon or maybe this morning. Uh, community meetings are going to be fairly short from what I saw on there as well. Um, community of the Whole is going to be talking about budgeting, some kind of thing happening as well. I wasn't too clear on it, but of course, you can always go to ci.missoula.mt.us to find out more information about what the city of Missoula is doing in the upcoming meetings and also your art calls as well. So it is a great resource for anybody all about Missoula in terms of the city government and also looking for permits to build or create things that are happening in the city of Missoula as well. Whew. All right, let's throw it to some dubbing stuff. I made a brand new dubbing stuff for y'all. Um, it's from the man on the Eiffel Tower. So without further ado, here's Dub and Stuff. And when I come back, I got some, what, what do I have? Oh, I got some uh, Missoula City events happening in um, the city of Missoula right after this. All right, um, uh, how do I say this? Hey, listen, man, I really wanted to bring up you to the Eiffel Tower to explain some things to you. Maybe... I don't know. Maybe we should sit down and talk about this over here. Hmm. Ooh, poo, hmm. Oh, this is awkward. Why, well, so I told her this isn't a knife. This is a knife. I'm thirsty. Mm. Well, you know, the Eiffel Tower has been something that I've always brought people... Like my mother, back in the day, she used to bring me up to the Eiffel Tower all the time. And it was pretty good. Really? Yeah, whenever my mom needed to get away from my dad, mm. it was never a, mm, well, good situation. <sighs> Let's see here. Have you tried any of the bread? In France, they call French bread just regular old bread. Well, I guess I should apologize about that joke I made earlier. I probably shouldn't talk at the end of the punchline. It doesn't really much make much sense oh, if you actually no. tell the joke yeah. uh, but at the end and not give a wind-up to the punch line okay okay i'll tell you a good joke here's a good joke why does donald trump hate pavilions i don't know well because it doesn't have any walls you get it you know because you know pavilions have this uh the support beams and the roof but it doesn't have any walls and donald trump really hates not having a wall you know very funny <laughs> well you know you should probably add to it the conversation. You can't just sit there and eat the whole time. It's not really that polite. Oh, what's this? This is why I invited you. I'm looking to open a new comedy club, Bob. Well, you don't say. Eiffel Tower would be the perfect place for it. 
<laughs> well, I know the Alpha Tower is a beautiful place, but, you know, the French should be known for their comedy, and far be it from me from stopping them. I think the French should go into the modern era of comedy, <coughs> not just miming and <coughs> doing some gags and stuff. <coughs> um, listen here, boy. You're making me stand up for nothing. Not while I'm alive will I put a comedy club up on the Eiffel Tower. <coughs> hmm, this isn't good. <coughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city events that are happening within the city of Missoula. Kicking things off, this month is Bike Month. And uh, one of the things of the various locations is coffees um, around Missoula. So part of Bike Month, this is the um, group. Uh, let me see, just double checking. Um, looks like they're doing a bunch of uh, coffee places and other places in the city of Missoula. Bike Month is happening, just letting you guys know kicking off today. Oh, you can go to pedalmissoula.org for more information. It's being put on through them. Um, circus show gymnastics camp. So still camps are happening at many of the uh, um, indoor sports uh, gymnastics areas as well. Roots Acro Sports Center is hosting a camp. They have full day and half day camps. They have different <laughs> themes for different days. Um, they, they, only, they ask that your kids do a minimum of, of two camps for the, these particular theme days. Um, these are for kids age three to 12. Of course, a bunch of these camps it usually sums up about two hundred dollars. That's like two hundred dollars for two days, so it's about a hundred dollars for a single day of camp. Great American Red Pen Pals Club. I thought this really stuck out to me because I remember having a pen pal when I was in uh, third grade. Connect with someone from across the country as you share your love of books and a unique life experience through the art of handwritten letters. They'll match you up with a fellow reader from one of their partner libraries, Mill Valley Public Library, California, Ash Re Regional Library, uh, North Carolina, uh, Watoga County Library, North Carolina once again, and of course, uh, Ellsworth Public Library in Maine. When you uh, sign up, they'll uh, provide uh, you with a welcoming packet filled with everything you need to get started. I think that's really cool. And you know, why not have a pen pal that you can just talk to and hang out. You don't have to hang out with you, just write to them back and forth. It's, you know, brought back to tr 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 traditional handwriting letters. Besides, everyone needs to know how to write a letter at some point, even if it's uh, to pay a bill. <laughs> Out to Lunch uh, is happening from 11 to 2 p.m. today, every Wednesday until pretty much uh, Labor Day. Um, the Out to Lunch happens at Karis Park. It's lunchtime. Put down your work and leave the confines of your office. You can take your kids. You can take your work com um, comp compatriots to the Out to Lunch. Today is um, Milltown Min Minosco and Big Fiasco. They're going to be a rock reggae country band, um, and they're going to be playing today at the Out to Lunch. And they also is another band playing at um, downtown tonight, which I'll talk about when we talk about Thursday events. But also happening today is geology. Um, of course, uh, geology is being hosted at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Uh, Discovery area is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits. If you're under three, you get in free. It opens at 11 a.m. and they go until about 5 p.m. And this is a good way for kids to get hands on with science. But of course, they also have some board games in the afternoon uh, starting around three o'clock. Uh, kids stay by the library. In co um, cooperation with the Missoula Food Bank, the Missoula Public Library is hosting the Kids Table, which runs every each weekday from June 11th all the way to August 24th and offers kids and their caregivers a free lunch along with activity from 11.30 to 1 p.m. in the library's large meeting room. Free lunch. And this also helps promote the Missoula Public Library and the Missoula Food Bank. So the more meals they, meals they, um, they feed to people, the more um, outreach and ability they're able to give food for people who need it, who don't necessarily know about these programs. And also, a good reason for me to tell anybody out there listening um, who wants to have a free lunch, but you have to be under 18, and that's all the requirements. You don't have to uh, be... Uh, at a certain poverty line to enjoy free food at the at the kids table. Scrabble and Bridge start at uh, 12.45 p.m., around 12.30ish, around lunchtime at the Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in Missoula, I gotta say, um, but you can do that. It's some fun Scrabble or Bridge game 
that you can do at the Missoula Senior Center. They have a bunch of activities there all the time. Middle School Writers Group is happening 3.30 in the afternoon at Missoula Public Library. This happens from 3.30 to 5, and this is for grades 6 to 9. Um, for writers uh, to get good food, to get good feedback, play with words, and eat a little chocolate. And also, I just want you guys to know that 4 p.m. this afternoon, MCAT, Spectrum, Families First, and Missoula Public Library will be doing a groundbreaking um, happening to at 4 o'clock at the uh, construction site right next to the Missoula Public Library. But also, if you're done with that and you want to hop on over and enjoy some lively discussion from 6 to 8 p.m., Missoula Pub Public Library has a Socrates ca uh, Cafe, so you get to talk with uh, uh, intellectual folks or people who think they're intellectual talking about philosophy from 6 to 8 p.m. But if you're not interested in that, maybe you get overwhelmed by the intelligence, um, you can go to some 3D printing workshops starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. It's just to learn about 3D printing. Hey, if you don't know about 3D printing, you can learn about 3D printing with, with the Missoula Public Library. I believe it's mostly every first Wednesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. They do this until about 8. It's a nice way to just get involved, but there's only six spots available for room. It's a small makerspace area, but uh, six people at a time, but they do this very frequently. All right, so that wraps up for your Wednesday. Um, here's some of your things that are happening Wednesday night, a bunch of trivia. If you're interested in doing some trivia, the Silver Slipper has trivia starting at 7.30. Uh, they have trivia with K Carlos. Karaoke follows at the VFW starting about 7.15. They got Broadway, uh, Broadway Barn Grill has a trivia at 7.30 as well. Missoula City Band plays at 8 p.m. And it's going to be uh, uh, a good one because they're going to do a tribute to Neil Diamond and also uh, the folks of Animal House, which is celebrating 40 years since the movie came out. So Missoula City Band will be playing music from Animal House. Um, Montana Made. Um, it's going to be a VFW. It's going to be some country and acoustic music. Trivial beer suits going to be the press box. Karaoke is the dark horse, and karaoke is at the battle under tonight. It is Wednesday. Karaoke is all happening Wednesday night and beyond. All right, let's skip on over to Thursday because I'm pretty much all out of uh, art clips, and all I have is Thursday to wrap up my show. Um, Mismo. Um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena Roots Acro Sports Center all start their morning gymnastic activities and camps all starting around 9 a.m. So you can check all those out. Tiny Tales at Missoula Public Library. And this is from kids' birth to 36 months. This unique program is held every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, they have a, another story time happening on the weekends and, uh, and also many different days as well. But Tiny Tales is for younger kids who are learning to uh, speak and learn nine new, nine new words a day as their... Uh, is their biggest selling point from the Missoula Public Library. Spectrum is also doing hovercrafts starting at 11 a.m. on Thursday, and you guys can enjoy that. Easy step to ebooks. Hey, Missoula Public Library, they know technology is um, basically kind of replacing books in terms of where you read, but why not learn to uh, get books and get easy steps to ebooks from the Missoula Public Library? And this happens from noon to 1 p.m. Thursdays. Drop in crafts of the Big Sky branch, as I always said the last couple weeks, um, Big Sky High School hosts a, a special build it and take it crafts um, event happening pretty much every Thursday during open hours, and this is from 12 to 4 p.m. at the Big Sky branch library. Lego Club is happening at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. If you're interested in playing with some Legos and having your kids experience some Legos and build some stuff, they have Diplo pieces for some of the really younger kids who you're afraid that might swallow some of the pieces. And uh, of course, children who are under 12 must be, must be accompanied by an adult. <coughs> Predator feeding. Hey, you want to see uh, a, a small bug eat, eat, eat an even smaller bug? Take them to the Missoula Insectarium and you get to check out who's hungry today. It's every, three thir it's every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Downtown tonight, hey, I told you I'd get to it. Downtown tonight is the evening um, successor of the Out to Lunch uh, event that happens every Wednesday. This happens every Thursday night from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, Tom Catmull's Last Resort Country Music is playing that night as well at Karis Park. This event offers an outdoor venue for live music, um, Missoula's best food vendors and the Bud Light Beer and Wine Garden for uh, residents and visitors. This event also highlights a weekly family activity and, as always, is free to attend. 
Homegrown Comedy Night. It is the first Thursday of the month, and the Union Club hosts an, an open comedy night for anybody who uh, wants to see if they're funny. Hey, if you're the funniest person at work, why not prove it at the Union Club where you get to hang out with all the other funny people from work? <laughs> You got to laugh at yourself. Anyways, let's talk about some things happening on uh, Thursday night. Uh, other things. Uh, you got karaoke at the Dark Horse. You got some rock music at the Top Hat Lounge. Mipso. And then you got a hip-hop workshop at the Downtown Dance Collective. You're not singing hip-hop. You're dancing hip-hop because it's the Downtown Dance Collective. So there's some of your Thursday night events that are happening. Some more fun. They're doing painting at Twist, reading, performing at their Burn Rudick Studio, Artist Studio. They're doing a book reading and art show at 7 p.m. Burnswick Artist Studio t tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So here's a nice little brief overview. If you're fi interested in finding out more information about your events in Missoula, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net or in Russia, MissoulaEvents.net. That was stupid. And this show is over, so thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.